I don't always drink tea, but when I do, I prefer to drink my tea in a travel trailer that weighs less than 6,000 pounds. Hey everybody, Mike from RV Blogger here in front of the camera and Susan's behind the camera. And if you've seen us before on YouTube, welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time seeing us, welcome aboard. Susan and I make tons of videos all about RVing and we also have our website called rvblogger.com where we have hundreds of helpful articles. Without any further ado, let's get on with our video all about travel trailers that weigh less than 6,000 pounds. This travel trailer is the StarCraft Autumn Ridge model number 20 FBS. It has an unloaded vehicle weight of 4,595 pounds, a cargo carry capacity of 1,405 pounds for an overall gross vehicle weight rating of 6,000 pounds. It measures in at 23 feet, 8 inches long, and it can sleep up to four people. When you walk into the back of this travel trailer, you walk right into the kitchen area and the living area. As you swing around, the front of the camper is where the bedroom is located. And we'll take a look at the bathroom last, which is also all the way in the back of this trailer. So here I am walking in through the exterior door, which is located all the way in the back of this trailer. My first impression is that it feels big and roomy in here. Now you'll notice just to my left is where the refrigerator is located. And this fridge is a good size fridge for a camper that this it's this size. It's got a separate freezer up top. So very, very nice setup there. And just to the left of the refrigerator is where you have a couple of pantry cabinets. So just to my right here is where the kitchen is located. And up top here, you've got some really nice sized storage cabinets up here. There's no shelving in here, which for a cabinet this size is a shame because it could use a little shelf in there and then you can store more stuff. Next to that, you have a microwave oven. Down below that, you've got your range hood and a three burner stove. And then next to that, we have a really, really nice size, big single bowl sink. It's got a gooseneck faucet overhead. The only thing it's missing is a little sprayer, but honestly, I think you could do fine with just the way this is. Down below that, we've got some drawers for all your kitchen utensil storage. And then there's even a nice big cabinet underneath the sink as well. Finally, right next to that, we have a real oven in here, which is great. If you guys are into pizza as much as I am. Now, just past the kitchen, you have even more countertop space. But I think that the idea here is this is more a part of your living space. That's why the backsplash ends and then the regular wall is above this part. So uh, you've got a nice big countertop space. You've got your radio controls up top, a little bit of storage up there as well. And then this is where your TV would mount to the wall, which, by the way, I think is a very good location because it's directly across from the sofa area and you can also see it from your bed very, very easily. Now, down below all of this, there's also a couple more ca uh, cabinet doors with more storage underneath. Now, just past the living and TV area is where the bedroom's located in here. This is a good size bed. Let's see how big it is exactly. It is about 74 inches by 60 inches. So we have a short queen bed in here. You'll also notice that you've got some open storage overhead. I'm not really a big fan of this. I'm afraid if you put stuff up here, it would fall out while you're driving down the road. But you could always buy like some cargo netting or something and install that yourself after the fact and that'll help keep things from falling out. Now on each side, you've also got a very large wardrobe cabinet. I mean, these things are at least three feet deep uh, on both sides of the bed. So lots of room to hang up your garments and such. And then underneath, you've got a reading light above and then you have two really large nightstands. So you folks with a CPAP machine, this would be perfect. Uh, there's also a receptacle on each side, so you can plug in, you can recharge your phones, computers, whatever you need, uh, and be in good shape. Now down below this bed, there's also some storage space, and that's where the dinette table stows away as well. So here I am on the couch in here, and it's very, very comfortable, and it feels roomy in here. There's a couple things I really like. First of all, this couch is in a slide out, so it creates extra floor, uh, floor space inside the camper, so it feels really large. And speaking of the floor, I really like the brown and gray tone floor that they have in here. A lot of campers today just have the gray floor and it looks kind of 
I don't know, generic, but this gives it a really, really nice feel. I really think that's a nice touch. Now the sofa here is very, very comfortable. And as I mentioned earlier, it's directly across from where the TV would mount on the wall, which is right behind where Susan is shooting right now. So everything's in a very good location. Now there is no dinette table, but we just showed you that the dinette stows under the master bed. You could set that up here and then this becomes your dinette area. So it's a sofa. It is your dinette area, and finally, it does become another bed, and it just jackknifes right out. And if you go ahead and jackknife it, this bed becomes uh, about 68 inches by about 40 inches. So, you know, maybe a kid or a smaller individual will be able to sleep here very comfortably. So here I am in the bathroom in the very back of this camper, and I like the way they've used the space in here. It's not that big of a bathroom, but I think the space is used very well. First of all, it's got this corner style shower with the glass doors on it, and I think it's just a great setup. There's plenty of room in here, and you don't have a curtain and things like that in your way. Now, headspace wise, I'm 5'11", and over my head, outside of where the fan is, there's gosh what is that six feet three inches and inside where the fan is there's six feet five inches so you taller folks will be able to fit in here pretty well they also have a nice uh, enclosure in here with a couple of shelves for your shampoo and soap just outside the shower is where you'll find the medicine cabinet that opens up it's about five or six inches deep so there's some decent storage space in there you have a nice vanity with electrical receptor over top so you can plug in your hair dryer or your shaver or whatever and then finally you've got a little bit of storage down below the sink so you'll notice like over my shoulder here there's even more open storage in the bathroom here you could put toilet paper linens towels whatever you're going to have but there's no doors or anything to hold that stuff in so again if you're traveling down the road it's probably all going to fall out you would definitely need to buy some cargo netting or maybe even install your own cabinet doors on top of this to be able to hold all of your stuff inside. Uh, I'm sitting on the commode right now. I'm definitely not going to pass the elbow test in this one, but there's so much space in front of me here that I don't feel cramped at all. One more really great feature in this camper is all the way towards the front, you've got this pass-through storage space with lots of storage. This travel trailer is the Keystone Hideout model number 181BH. It has an unloaded vehicle weight of 4,580 pounds, a gross vehicle weight rating of 5,400 pounds for a cargo carry capacity of 820 pounds. It measures in at 22 feet 9 inches long and it can sleep up to 8 people. When you first walk into this travel trailer on the right hand side, you've got your Murphy bed and living area. It then wraps around to your dinette and kitchen area. Behind me here we have bunks and of course the bathroom. So here I am walking in the door of this travel trailer and my first impression is it looks really, really nice in here. I think Keystone's done a great job with the white cabinetry and the dark trim to create some contrast in here and it just looks really really nice now on my right hand side here is where your murphy bed and your sofa are located so you can sit down right here and relax you've got some cup holders that fold out right here you can put your drink down but all in all it's a pretty comfy sofa to sit on you'll notice also on each side of the sofa there's an end table each end table has a couple of drawers then there's also receptacles and usb ports just on top of the end table or nightstands, however you want to look at them, because this serves as both your sofa and your bed. Now, above the nightstands are these nice wardrobe closets. These are very deep. I would say they're in the neighborhood of two to three feet deep. You can hang your garments up in there and still have room to put things underneath of them. Now, to get the Murphy bed to work, this is a great system. You just roll out the back of the sofa it just rolls right over, very nice and easy and convenient. Just pop one clip, lower this down, and then you've got your fold-away mattress, which is a sort of mattress, by the way, so pretty good quality. And there you go. you got a nice, thick mattress to lay on. Now, the size of this bed looks to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 74 inches by about 60 inches, so definitely a short queen bed. 
Over top here, you'll also notice we have some additional overhead storage, which is open. And then down below, you've got these cubbies behind each of the nightstands where you can store things away or put your phone or tablet or whatever you have that you need to stow away while you're sleeping at night. So here I am sitting at the dinette, and this is a nice booth style dinette. Uh, you could sit four people here, I think, pretty comfortably. One thing you'll notice is it's got a nice big window that opens over top of the dinette, so you can get some airflow through here. Nice light right up over top. And the dinette itself is set into a slide out, so it does create much more floor space inside of this travel trailer. Now this tabletop will drop down and this dinette will convert into another bed. And if you choose to do that, you would end up with about six feet, three inches by about uh, 42 inches wide. So decent amount of space. I would say an adult could sleep here. Certainly a child could comfortably fit in here as well. Now there is a bit of a step up, step up to get to this dinette. It's almost 12 inches tall, but they do have linoleum floor under here, which is a much, much better choice than carpet. So I like that part of the dinette as well. And then finally, underneath of the dinette, we have three nice size drawers for additional storage. So across from the dinette is where the kitchen is located. This kitchen is called an inline kitchen. It just means all of your appliances are in one line. Starting up top here, we have a nice size cabinet for some storage. Then you have a regular microwave oven up here. You've got your vent hood with a fan and a light. You have a two burner stove, which I like the fact that they did it stacked instead of sideways because it helps create a little bit of countertop space here. And then you have a small single bowl sink with a gooseneck faucet overhead for washing up those dishes. Down below your sink, the door opens up and there's plenty of storage space under there. And you have a couple of drawers for all your kitchen utensils as well. Next, as we move on down the kitchen is the refrigerator. Now up top, it's got a very good size freezer and down below, it's got a very good size refrigerator as well. Now this is a 12 volt fridge, which means that it's gonna run on battery power or shore power. You don't need any propane to power this kind of refrigerator. The other big benefit of a 12 volt is that it runs on a compressor style motor, which will chill the refrigerator much quicker than the propane styles that we've seen so often. So here we are just beyond the kitchen and this is where the bunks are. Now this bunk and the bottom bunk are both really pretty good sizes. Let's give them a little quick measure here. This bunk is 72 inches by, gosh, about 48, 49 inches. So a decent amount of space on both bunks. The upper bunk does have a 300 pound weight capacity. So two kids could sleep up here very, very easily. Same thing down below. Now you will notice that the top bunk does have a light and also a window, but unfortunately there are no receptacles or USB ports up here. And the same is true for the bottom bunk. No USBs or receptacles for kids to recharge all their electronics. But the bottom bunk is pretty cool because there's a lot of storage under there. You can even fold up the bottom bunk, get it out of your way. Just close this little clip right here, and then you have awesome tall storage in here. You can store bikes, chairs, all kinds of stuff that normally you would not be able to store in a travel trailer. Here I am inside the bathroom, and I'm standing inside the shower like I always am, and you guys know that I'm 5'11", but inside the skylight here, you've got about six feet, two inches of head space. So you guys that are taller than that are gonna to have to crouch down a little bit. Now this has a nice surround in here. It's got a separate shower wand that you can use. Off to my right is a little soap dish area. And uh, unfortunately, it also has a shower curtain in here. You know I'm not a big fan of those. Uh, spend a couple extra bucks and put a retractable shower door in here. Very easy to do. Now Susan's in the shower and I'm standing out towards the door of the bathroom and you'll notice that there is a nice corner style medicine cabinet here. When you open it up, you have all this room inside because of the corner shelving that's in there. Down below that, you have a nice vanity sink and then additional storage down below. 
Here I am on the commode, and as far as the elbow test goes, even with the door shut, I think I'd have plenty of room in both directions. This travel trailer is the Heartland Prowler model number 172BHX. It has an unloaded vehicle weight of 3,820 pounds, a cargo carry capacity of 1,190 pounds for an overall gross vehicle weight rating of 5,010 pounds. It measures in at 26 feet, six inches long, and it can sleep up to seven people. When you first walk into this camper on the right hand side, you'll find your sofa and Murphy bed. Then as we wrap around, you enter into the kitchen and dinette area. Finally, towards the back of the camper is where you'll find your bunk beds and your bathroom. So when you first walk into this camper, the first thing I noticed is that the door height in here is a little short. Some campers are built with shorter doors. Now, as you guys know, I'm 5'11". So I almost smacked my head, my hair hit it, not my head, thankfully, but it's only five feet, nine inches tall. So for you taller folks, you're going to have to duck a little every time you walk in here so you don't smack your head. Now on my right hand side is where the sofa and the Murphy bed are located. And actually, you know, this is actually a pretty comfortable sofa. Um, you know, three people could easily sit here and be quite comfortable. Now behind me is where the Murphy bed's located. And so to open that, you just jackknife out the sofa. You just pull the D-ring and the bed flat platform drops down and then the mattress folds down on top of it. Now there's one light over overhead for a little reading light. And there is a receptacle at the one end of the mattress up there. Right next to me here, you've also got a wardrobe closet with a couple of receptacles here, which would be right next to what might be a nightstand for you. Let's see the size of this bed. And it is measuring in at 74 inches long by 60 inches wide. So this will be considered a short queen bed. So the kitchen area is what we would consider an inline kitchen. All of the appliances are right in one line. Starting up top, you have a microwave oven. And then next to that, you've got a nice big cabinet storage space up here. Down below, this is really unusual, but it comes with a double bowl stainless steel sink. I personally prefer a large single bowl sink. I think it's easier to do dishes, especially larger pots and pans, but you may have a different opinion. You might like the double bowl. Let us know in the comments below which, one of, which kind of sink you prefer and why. Also, it's got a large gooseneck faucet overhead. And then next to that, you have a two burner stove, which is turned sideways, and that helps to create a little more countertop space in here. Now, speaking of the countertop, this is a great looking countertop. I've not seen one in this wood pattern before, but I think it looks really sharp, gives it a little more interest. Um, it just looks really good. Down below that, we have a kitchen utensil door, drawer, and then below that, storage below your kitchen sink. Just beyond the kitchen sink is where the fridge is located. It's a very good size fridge for a smaller camper like this. And then it does have a separate freezer up top. The dinette is located directly across from the kitchen and this could easily seat four people. We're showing the table in the drop down position so that this can also become another bed in here. And this bed would measure uh, about 60 inches by 40 inches wide. So I would say a child would be able to sleep on, on here very, very comfortably. One thing I will note about the dinette location is that it is on the camp side of the trailer, meaning that when you're looking out the window, and we have a bad glare, so we have the shade down, but when you're looking out the window, you can see your campsite, you know, your fire ring, your picnic table, and the people that are out there hanging out. So it's a great location because it's on the right side of the camper. Over top of the kitchen dinette, you've also got these really nice large storage cabinets here, so you have tons of storage. Now, just beyond that is where the bunk beds are located back here. Now, these bunks are pretty good size. Um, gosh, this one is 70 inches by about 50 inches. So, I mean, you could probably get two small kids up top and another two small kids down the bottom. I will say this though, there's only a 200 pound weight rating on these, which is one of the lower weight ratings I've ever seen on a bunk bed. So I couldn't sleep up here, I'll tell you that. Susan could, but I couldn't. Um, and so that's a bit of a concern. I'll also note that there are no electrical receptacles or USBs up here. So 
your kids really won't be able to plug in up here and recharge overnight or play games while they're falling asleep. So that could be something to look out for if you're in the market for a new camper. Down below the bottom bunk, there is a light under here, but again, no USBs or receptacles. Or and window. then, what? Or a window. And there's no window either, Susan noted, which is a great point. And then down below that, there is a lot of storage that runs underneath a whole half of this lower bunk. So here I am standing in the bathtub inside the bathroom like I usually am. And I am 5'11 and my head is just hitting the ceiling in here. So there's about 5 feet 11 inches of head space in here. Uh, it does have a nice uh, shower surround in here. It's got three little corner shelves in here. So you can put your soap and shampoo. It's got a detachable wand and all that stuff. Now this one does have a shower curtain which... If you've seen my videos before, I don't really like shower curtains, but in this circumstance, it's okay because the shower curtain's on a track that sort of bows out into the bathroom, but the other reason it's necessary is because this is a bathtub setup. So if you have little ones and they need to take a bath, here you go. Um, it's about a 16 inch tall tub and um, you can't really have a shower door or things like that on here because I think they would be in the way of you getting in and out of the tub. Your only real option besides a curtain would be a retractable shower door, which is really what I'd like to see in this kind of setup. Now Susan's located in the shower and I'm standing across the bathroom from her. You'll notice that you've got a mirror up top here, no medicine cabinet, and I guess you could always add one later. But one cool feature is this little panel here. This is where you could turn on your water pump and water heater and it also displays your tank capacity. So having this in the bathroom is a great idea. Just below that you have a corner vanity with some storage underneath. Finally, here I am sitting on the commode, and as far as the elbow test goes, even with the door closed, it passes with flying colors. Now that you've checked out these three awesome travel trailers that weigh less than 6,000 pounds, there's only three things left to do. Number one, leave us a comment down below telling us which one was your favorite and why. Number two, give us a thumbs up if you liked the video. And number three, please smash that subscribe button so that you will be notified every week when Susan and I put out a brand new video. And by the way, if you'd like to check out some other travel trailers, just click the box down below and Susan and I will see you in the next video.